the microservices and how it works and uh, what exactly uh, how we use in the microservices. Thanks, Krishna. So I'm starting, Krishna, and uh, I think uh, we are good to go. So circuit breaker, like you know, you might be knowing, it's a general terminology in the electric uh, engineering or electronics engineering where you might be seeing the circuit breaker at your home also whenever the more power fluctuate and more power comes in the power supply we have fuse installed in our like you know uh, home appliance also like you know home system and then you have a fuse kind of setup at your home that is nothing but your circuit breaker in older ways but there what happens if there is more power supply come then what you do uh, the mc or that fuse like you know goes off and it is stop your power supply and then you need to manually replace the uh, that fuse right so that is the general terminology uh, being used about the circuit breaker i mean that is what the circuit breaker in general but how it is being used in the microservices and why it is uh, popular and what way we can implement those uh, circuit breaker patterns so we will be going to discuss that uh, in detail today okay and uh, then we will go for the demo of the application sorry i forgot to mention one slide what is the agenda so agenda will be uh, what is the circuit breaker then we will talk about uh, what way we can implement the circuit breaker in the microservices and then we will go for the uh, hysterics and resilience 4j these are the two implementation most popular today uh, we will uh, try to implement application using these uh, two uh, like you know uh, way of uh, uh, using the circuit breaker and then we will go for the demo application and then i will give you some assignment so that you can finish that and in the next uh, uh, webinar when we join next week uh, we can continue from there and i believe like you know last uh, couple of assignment uh, about api gateway about uh, eureka uh, you guys have completed though i haven't received any submission uh, but if you haven't submitted please uh, do that even those videos uh, whatever we are having this discussion i am putting on public uh, youtube so that you can check that uh, later on also and uh, finish those assignment so please uh, work on them yeah okay so and and i hope like you know my screen size is good for you and uh, you are able to really uh, see it properly because i don't know uh, just confirm me so that uh, i can be assured okay absolutely fine thank you and okay so so what happens uh, as I told you, circuit breaker is an electro electronic or electric, uh, you know, component that makes your circuit open. And whenever the circuit open, what happens? It makes sure that it will not allow you to pass the excess uh, electricity or excess current flowing from the main power supply. Uh, so that if any short circuit happen, it is stop your power fluctuation there itself that is the circuit breaker we used to uh, like you know deal in your daily uh, like you know life also in home also you can see whenever the source short circuit happen and more uh, excess power come your mc gate trip and then your know, power supply gate is stopped so the same concept is the circuit broker i mean that is the concept circuit breaker and even in the wikipedia you can go the detail about how the circuit breaker is designed in the electric uh, engineering or electronics uh, way, right? That is the component you can say. And older way people were using uh, this fuse. So fuse were like, you know, the older way of uh, knowing what is the circuit breaker. And in the fuse, what happened, you have to manually uh, like, you know, check. But uh, when we talk about circuit breaker, what happened, it's more kind of automated. So whenever the excess thing happen, it trips uh, and then whenever the normal happen, it switch back. When we will be using in the microservices world, we will be using more kind of automated way. But the concept will remain safe, uh, same. So concept is like, you know, if one service is calling to multiple service or other service, and if there are multiple failure happen while calling the services, then we will apply the circuit breaker so that more like, you know, resources cannot be consumed and your uh, your like you know the you are unnecessary calling the service because the service is already down so you are spending time on those calls so that will uh, like you know make sure that circuit breaker will make sure that you are not calling that uh, services and then uh, whenever the services come up 
you will enable them or you will uh, allow the normal uh, you know call so that is uh, what we want to achieve using the circuit breaker design pattern in the microservices okay so this is a kind of a diagram and i can see some background noise uh, if somebody is not speaking please uh, put on mute okay otherwise you continue yeah so you see here and and uh, if you have any question in between please write on the chat i am just watching the chat also so no worries i will able to answer instantly okay so you can see in this diagram uh, the default uh, state of any circuit is closed state which means your power supply or like you know one service is able to call another service whenever the state is closed that means it's a normal state when services are calling uh, each other but let's say uh, okay let's say this way one just a minute five i am just trying to show you this way okay so let's say uh, this one we have order service and one we have payment service order service is calling to payment service whenever this call is happening properly this we call the closed state in the circuit breaker terminology so that that concept we call the circuit breaker is closed but let's say if uh, if uh, this particular payment service is down and order service wherever calling the payment service it is returning the 500 or like you know service is the failing so that state we call the open uh, circuit state where we are saying the circuit is open now which means wherever the circuit open means like you know power supplies goes off the similar way your microservice call will not happen but it will the close i mean that is the open state and then we have one more state which we say partial state so i'll go back to the slide just to show so you understood uh, the closed state and open state uh, please write on the chat so that i can uh, get clear uh, so far clear what is the closed state what is the open state in the circuit breaker terminology Uh, please write on the uh, comment box. Ma, one time, my voice is reduced. I will do it. Yeah. Okay. So, Ira is saying uh, yes. Uh, okay. Oh, yes. 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 Rohit is asking, uh, can you please repeat again? Okay, Rohit. So what happens uh, whenever one service is calling to another service and we are calling, uh, we are applying the circuit breaker, the default behavior when service is calling each other and service is happening properly, the default behavior is closed state, means circuit is closed. But whenever the service is not able to call one service to another service, that means the cir circuit breaker is open so that state we call the circuit breaker open state, which means circuit breaker is enabled. And now uh, it will not allow you to pass through. The service will not call to another service. But the circuit breaker came into the picture. Like at home, uh, what happened when more power supply comes or short circuit happen, your uh, like you know circuit breaker or your MC or fuse like you know get uh, like you know trip, and then it will not allow the further power supply. Similar way in the microservices wherever the circuit breaker open it will not allow to call you to the another microservices so that is we call the open state and closed state is your normal behavior so now why we do that so what happens so i will explain you this this thing uh, once again but before that i want to go to that diagram so what happens let's say order service is calling to the payment service and uh, payment service by default uh, failed because of some reason the service can fail two way one is like you know by default service is failing and returning you the response so you know the 500 you got and you know the service is failed but when you go into the real life scenario what happened the payment service is calling three different another service internally let's say it is calling uh, phone pay it is calling google pay it is calling three other uh, different services and those services, these other services might take more time. So when you are order service is calling payment service, payment service internally calling to other services, they are taking time. So you are not getting response 
and there is some waiting time. So what will happen? Let's say uh, your thread one. Uh, one second, just give me. A... Yeah, can you hear me? Sorry, I just muted. Uh, please write on the comment box, I mean chat box, so that I'll go a little slow if it is not able to digest so far, because this is uh, the main important concept. Others, other thing is theory and practical. But this is the main thing which I'm trying to showcase you. Okay. Okay, Rohit. So what happened uh, now? Let's say order service is calling payment service and payment service is taking time. So first scenario, I told uh, the connection refused directly. There is first scenario where straight uh, you failed, uh, failed directly, which is fine because now you know, like, you know, it failed and you, this order service calling payment service failed then order service uh, will return the response to the user that the service failed. But the problem comes, let's say this payment ser order service is calling to payment serv uh, service and it is not failing instantly, but it is calling internally few other things and then it is taking time to fail. So it is like you know, some timeout happen here. Let's say after timeout of five seconds, this service fail. So that means this five second is waiting time, right? Now, let's say there are 10 users and 10 requests are coming from this place. So you got 10 threads or uh, we have a thread pool. So all the order service is calling one thread pool and one thread is assigned to each call. So now, now let's say 10 thread pool is the maximum capacity of our system. I'm just giving example. And all the 10 thread got stuck because of this waiting time. Now, not only your payment service is failed, but your order service also will fail because it goes out of resources. So what will happen when we go into the actual uh, microservices world, what happened right now, we are taking only two service example, but when you go in the real example, there could be 10 different more services. And let's say order service is calling five different services and out of five, three dif different services calling another three services. So it can be a big, uh, like, you know, a uh, big mass of uh, services. And if we go this way, whenever like, you know, timeout happen at each service level, there are high chances uh, this, uh, this payment service fail other services as well. So just to avoid this kind of scenario, uh, we require some techniques or some strategy so that we can handle this, this thing gracefully and it can avoid any failure into the system. So that's why we say, uh, whenever we are talking about the circuit breaker, it's a fault tolerance system. Means any fault happen in the system anywhere, we are handling that uh, through this uh, particular pattern. And I'm not going right now with the pattern, but I'm telling you how the, uh, the evolution of the pattern happened and why we need the circuit breaker. So, okay, so will time out of order service help? No, because let's say from order service, you need to make the payment after like 10 user, let's say you are on the flip card, you are ordering uh, uh, one item and similar to you, there are 10 other users, they are also ordering and everybody need to make some payment, right? And let's say your payment service is down, which is not a problem if you instantly know the payment service is down. But what happened? Your payment service not only down, but payment service is calling another five services. And this payment service before making your call or before giving you the response of failure, it is taking time. So it is like you know some time out happening five seconds. Meanwhile, what happened? Uh, this flip card have so many users. And what happened? These ten user. Let's say that ten, maximum capacity of flip card is let's say ten user. And all the 10 user after ordering, they are going to the payment, they are waiting and your another 11th user come that will uh, like, you know, see your all resources are uh, already occupied. And this, this user will also not able to call. So this service also fail, this service also fail. And because of all these other services also fail. So the, your full system will go out of uh, like, you know, capacity. And you have seen the flip card, the similar thing happened in the past when the billion day came, but it, it was like, you know, kind of this scenario. So if you go in the Amazon or flip card, now what they do, they apply this, uh, this pattern. And the concept of this pattern is 
let's say order service even the 10 threads are uh, waiting here it will it will uh, like you know uh, design such a way that if payment service is down why to uh, call 10 times when we know the payment service is down uh, after three calls i will say boss payment service is down don't call but instead of make your threads free and give the default response before without calling this payment service and say uh, the payment service is uh, down or like you know some other message so amazon what does uh, let's say in amazon you go uh, and search some books and let's say uh, you order some 10 books and uh, let's say payment service is down for them but still they will continue to show you the books and other services like you know uh, the shipment and order and uh, any other like you know inventory all the services will be available because they are not calling the payment service and they will tell you like you know payment will be done after 30 minutes or whatever their default behavior because when they will call again and again then you are uh, acquiring your resources so that's how they handle and now similar thing we can handle here how let's let's go with that approach so i am removing this thread here let's say bring here one request interceptor so what will happen let's say uh, i design such a way that whatever order come that goes to this uh, I, i'm just moving these things i return just for our example okay and here you are getting some response okay so what happened let's say your order service is calling this request interceptor and what this request interceptor do whenever it calls this payment service if payment service is up and getting the response it will return you the similar thing so it's well and fine but let's say this payment service is down then what will happen it will have some status so it will say status as let's say uh, stop so what would it will do it will tell like okay boss uh, uh, when you are calling the payment service it is having the stop status which means i will not allow you to call the payment service but what i will give i will return you a default response which could be you can design default response what you want to give the default design okay so this order service whenever uh, the payment service is down it will keep calling this uh, request interceptor and this request interceptor internally keep uh, uh, you know responding with this default response at the same time what it will do it will be calling this payment service and checking whether it's up again or not checking if it's up again or not okay so they have uh, this mechanism this interceptor i am just giving this interceptor uh, as uh, our class i am writing let's say our class which is doing all these behavior so this will internally keep checking if payment service is the up then i will allow this call if not up then i will keep uh, giving this default response and that way i can handle this thing so then it will not impact or like it will not eat up all the resources and this whole thing what i am telling you here this request interceptor which is nothing but your circuit breaker okay so what circuit breaker will do it will maintain some status it will return you the default response it will check if uh, if the the service is uh, available again then it will keep calling and if it is available then it will return you the response so that is the default behavior of circuit breaker so this request interceptor is nothing but your circuit breaker so for those kind of scenario you can apply the circuit breaker before moving further please uh, suggest i mean please ask if any query or uh, is it clear please write in the chat box if it is clear i can't see any response payment service can also send the default response okay payment service can send the is this request interception order or payment service request interceptor actually we will implement into order service but i, I just uh, brought it here because it's a different component it will look like uh, it's implemented here but it's a different component altogether and uh, while implementing it will be part of request interceptor only here here itself yeah okay then why we use circuit breaker yeah circuit breaker is this interceptor is nothing but your circuit breaker why i said interceptor because 
the interceptor you have to manually implement but circuit breaker netflix uh, and other uh, like you know uh, other uh, provider they have given you this uh, this feature by default that's why hope i was able to answer all the question or any other thing not clear yeah you are saying payment service can also send the default res response no uh, ayush you are asking payment service let's say this payment service is down then how order service will know, uh, will get the default response because this service itself is down you can't send it at that stage we need the circuit breaker yeah okay so now i will uh, try to go back this is just like you know i want to make you understand and the same thing now now we will go there and uh, does cb maintain request count and response yes they maintain all these things i i was just sorry forgot to mention so they say not only the count but they maintain fail percentage and success uh, why it is not telling fail percentage success percentage so let's say we give some threshold uh, seven calls are success and three calls fail right so it's not like you know in each call it will go payment service and check but what will happen it will say okay three calls so it failed continuously then i will make this as a stop and then after like you know some time maybe threshold based on the threshold i will uh, enable few requests to go to the check to the payment service and if those few requests again like you know go failure then i will make this stop again otherwise it will uh, allow the uh, the circuit to be closed so that's where uh, it will be keep doing internally the circuit breaker with configuration okay fine so uh, now i think this this model whatever we talked this is the model so default state is closed now from close to it can go open whenever you see the failure happen above a threshold what what i said threshold like let's say three times failure happen in a in a particular service like let's say order service is calling to the payment service and three time failure happen then i am saying okay boss open the circuit so that fourth call should not go there and then i will in this closed circuit only i will wait for some time duration or some threshold maybe 3 second or 1 second and then i will say let's uh, let's i cannot be have this circuit always closed but i will open the circuit partially that partial is nothing but your half open which means now out of let's say 10 call i will allow five call to go and uh, check like you know your your circuit is closed or not if circuit is closed then it will be fine if it is not closed then again it will go into the open state so it will be keep checking based on this threshold uh, you know uh, configurations and if failure rate is below a threshold then it will allow and close the circuit so that's the pretty much uh, the diagram of circuit breaker i hope this is uh, pretty clear and that's uh, e even in the electric uh, uh, engineering this is the same concept and same concept we will be using in microservices only thing this is the uh, in align with the microservices fine okay now uh, how to implement uh, circuit breaker uh, in in microservices so you see uh, i told you like you know one way you can write your own request interceptor and you can do that but the problem is that you have to maintain you have to do lot of coding for that just to avoid that uh, the netflix uh, created the framework called histrix which was popular and that is being used the uh, standard but from last couple of year what happened uh, histric uh, is went to in uh, maintenance mode and they are still uh, developing or like you know in the suspend mode so netflix itself is suggesting that until we are in that mode uh, please use the resilience 4j so that is being used now but uh, before like you know one year or one and a half year this was the def uh, default standard and it was very famous and then there are many other framework also to to apply the circuit breaker like if you are using istio or mesh or linkerd or like sentinel or failsafe the, these are another provider but today we will be talking only about these two and uh, e though we are not using uh 
guys uh, we have this plan of uh, 45 minute or something we have 10 minute and then we need to rejoin the same link so sorry about that i couldn't upgrade this plan because i am still evaluating to go with zoom and there are three four other plan and they are little expensive so i'm just thinking so if it goes out uh, with this meeting please join the same link you don't have to do anything okay hope this is fine uh, to everyone uh, please write on the chat if uh, all good with that fine okay okay yeah so now what happens we will be talking only about these two framework histrix and resilience but there are another framework also which uh, we can use uh, and different companies like istio and linkerd also being used uh, the circuit breaker okay so now let's say uh, we will talk histrix though histrix is not being used nowadays but you should understand the history concept and tomorrow you again don't know netflix says like you know we are starting again that then that time also it can help but once you know the history uh, the same concept will apply on resilience 4j with extra features and uh, technically they both are same and they are following the same principle whatever we discussed in the payment and order service so you can see the netflix history is part of spring cloud and it implements circuit breaker pattern and it allows into microservices what the fault tolerance and latency tolerance both by isolating all the failure and preventing them from cascading failure into one service to another service cascading failure so if, if we stop the circuit breaker with payment service then it will not allow to fail like other services where payment service is calling to five different services so those will not fail with this kind of uh, you know features so and then history provided dashboard also where you can monitor your application all your calls in nicer way in that dashboard and then they were having other another stream like turbine and other stream also where you can check all the like you know flow of uh, the call of the services okay okay so now what i will do i will go with the uh, the sample application whatever uh, whatever we discussed and uh, the same sample application we will write uh, in the spring boot uh, and uh, we will try to implement with histrix okay so now let's uh, go with that hope you are using uh, eclipse or intellij anything is fine and this code uh, no need to worry i will put on uh, github uh, link also and i will share you that so that you can access it anytime okay so first is like you know we will create a, uh, a spring boot project uh, like you know uh, like all other project which we have done already and i am giving the name order service so we will be doing the same thing oh, just let me minimize it it is now so I, we are following this pattern i am designing first order service i am designing payment service and then order service we will be having this circuit breaker which will call internally this payment service if payment service goes down then circuit breaker will give me the default response and if payment service is up then it will be returning the proper response that's what we will be seeing in the demo so first is our order service where what i have uh, the required dependency is this histrix so this histrix uh, is the de required dependency which will allow us to use the histrix please increase the font okay uh da, 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 da. here i don't know the eclipse i never tried uh sorry man i don't know in eclipse uh, can we do that uh are you able to see now or uh, still font is the problem okay go to preferences One second, this one is not even showing the preference. Right, this because when I'm sharing the screen, I can't see the other side of menu. That's where the problem. Okay. Sorry, this preference is not visible to me because of the sharing screen. No, no, no. Close it. 
sorry i i'm not able to do that anyway i will share the code and i'll just uh, go through uh, what i'm doing and uh, you will get the code so no worries okay so what happened uh, the the main uh, main thing uh, the required dependency is history cloud starter history and then we have the dashboard also i want to show so i am using the history dashboard these are the two important uh, like you know uh, dependency and then i am using the actuator endpoint because this is required for dashboard also and actuator if we can see the info and other endpoint the web i am using I, we might not need that but nothing else nothing fancy in this and then uh, we will go to the zoom also it's not uh, happening for me i don't know this macbook shortcut i'm not very sure i'm not mac user in general so sorry i'm not able to do that sorry okay next uh, time i will uh, check that how to do that while sharing because it's uh, not happening here also optimize meeting participants can do zoom okay participant can zoom okay that's that's really good okay so now you can see this is spring boot uh, basic application and here the two things i enabled uh, one is because i want to use the dashboard so i am using enable history dashboard and the important thing to use the history you need to have this annotation enable circuit breaker so which will allow to use the circuit breaker okay and then once that is happen what i am doing i am having a one controller where i have one method where i will make sure that my controller is up so if this is like you know ping method where i'll be checking okay my service is up and running and then i have one method where i am saying order product is my method name which is internally will call the payment service uh, this url and give me the payment uh, option so it will call this uh, rest template the payment message whatever message will be coming here we will be showing okay and what will be the message we will go into the payment service and we'll see and before it uh, you can see here i have written this at the rate history command so what it does like you know this is the allowing you to use the circuit breaker for this particular method so whenever somebody is calling this order product method and if that method is failed for any reason then what will happen it will go to this default pay, payment gateway and it will return this this message default payment with upi this is my message because i'm i'm not having business logic right now this is just to showcase for the demo and if this goes proper fine there is no error then uh, it will give me this particular message proper message whatever is coming from the order service okay so now uh, we will go to the payment service and then we'll come to this service again but before it if uh, in application properties i'm not using anything this is just port number 8080 though it's default port but i just given that and uh, this particular service i'm not using eureka or uh, api gateway to be registered just to showcase you but when i'm giving the assignment uh, my expectation from you that you use the eureka and api gateway with the same thing okay so now we will go to the payment service payment service is very plain in the pom.xml you see there is no no extra dependency actuator and web i am using nothing right and now you see here i am using just spring boot application nothing else and there is one controller which is having one method this is ping just to check my services up and this is the method where i am saying whenever somebody is calling this payment method i will return that payment is done successfully so first i will uh, start this particular application payment service so i am starting and will showcase it should return me this method whenever i am calling this payment payment is done successfully okay so now let me open the browser so you can see here and this service i am running on 8081 so you so see uh, recording didn't happen we were trying the new webinar tool called demio 
and it got a break in between then that recording i, I what i'm thinking uh, we i will shoot uh, separately and we'll provide you somehow i promised but I, it didn't happen so i will try to do that but yeah few recording even uh, i am directly sharing on the uh, youtube as well even this will uh, share on the youtube so that you can check that okay anyway uh, so i hope i am clear and loud right please say uh, if you can hear me properly some people have it okay thank you yeah that's this is the problem because when people join from the second time what happens they get confused like you know to uh, where to join and all so that happened and we will need to fix it okay okay so now you see our payment service is up and running this is ping method and there are two uh, another method which we want to call and another method is payments so if you see the this is returning the payment is done successfully okay now uh, this particular service is up now what will happen i will go to the order service so if you see in the diagram our payment service is up which is returning us the payment is successful now the another service is uh, order service here this order service what will happen uh, this will call this payment service so now we will start this order uh, this order service as well so now what will happen you can see in the controller in the controller we are calling this uh, payment service the same url 8081 which we are saying 8081 api v1 payments so the same url we are calling api v1 payments and whatever message is coming so message what it will come payment is done successfully this message will come and we will append this message to this message that should be your uh, url when you are calling this order service so now i will call this this particular url okay but before it let's say localhost now we will call 8080 and 8080 is uh, our order service so first we'll say ping so now your order service is up earlier your payment service was up and in this order service, instead of ping, we will say order product. So whenever we are doing, now you see here, your order returned successfully and payment service returned, payment is done successfully, okay? So your payment service returned, this particular message after this double quotes is coming from payment service. Even in this, you can see order application. When you see the console of uh, payment service, uh, you will see this is being called uh, from that particular service. Yeah, maybe it's not showing because we are not logging. But but you can see here. Now let's say I stop this service. Now I will stop this payment service. So whenever the service is stopped, in general, if I am not using history, it will fail that you you are not able to call. But when we are using the uh, the circuit breaker it will give you the default behavior. So now I will give the, and will go and stop this payment service. So now you see only the order service is running. And if I individually go on the payment service, let's say localhost 8081 and ping, you can see your service is down, right? Our payment service is down. So ideally when order service is calling this uh, payment service, it should uh, fail, right? Uh, are you able to follow me? I mean, because I don't know if you have lost it. Please say clear uh, so that uh, we'll go to the, okay. Okay, so now what we did, essentially we started order service, we started payment service. Okay, we started order service, we started payment service. And then uh, individually each service is working fine. Then from order service, we call the payment service and then that call is happening. Uh, it is returning properly. Now I stop the payment service. So now the payment service individually failed. But because we are using history command, still when I will call this method, this method will not fail because it will go to this default message. And that's what we want to achieve this so that any failure happened to the microservice, it will not fail our thread, but it will give us uh, something default. 
So now I will go to order service again, order product. And this time it will give me the default payment with UPI is in progress and available. So this have written this particular, when I call this method, instead of giving this message, it given me this message. That is what is done by strict, uh, uh, you know, failover or strict uh, circuit breaker. And when I bring again, let's say the payment service, let's say payment service, if I, if again comes back, then automatically that, uh, that service will uh, bring that up. The circuit is already uh, closed and then it, you see the payment is done successfully. So that's the pretty much behavior of uh, this particular uh, circuit breaker using Hystric. And the same uh, thing you can see here, if I go localhost 8080 and I can see the Hystric command also, Hystric stream also. So when I say localhost 8080 Hystric, it will give me that this Hystric dashboard. And what it can do uh, with Hystric dashboard, you can do, you can uh, either check this turbine thing or like, you know, check the, so the, these three things you can check with the Hystric dashboard. One is cluster wire turbine. So you can give your host name and turbine dot stream, or you can give this, uh, this, or you can give this Hystric. So let's say we will check this Hystric stream. Okay. So I'll say HTTP local host 8080 and then I say Hystrix stream. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Okay. And now if I say monitor stream, so now what happened, you can see uh, this order product is being called uh, inside the order controller and whatever calls is happening, it will start tracking and it will show. Now let's say if I ping this, this will not be tracked, but when I, when I call this order product, it will be tracked there. So now you see here the one call, this is the successful call. Now let's say again, I, if, if I stop this payment service and uh, call this method order product, this is a circuit this thing and now you see this is going this way so it will fail request count it will it will keep track of all these count and when the count is uh, go above that threshold then it will change the status of this circuit that happens after 14 millisecond and whatever like you know configuration so you can configure that and based on that this particular your uh, dashboard can show you everything about all the calls like you know whatever is happening so you can see here now again, let's say I continue calling this. So it will be keep telling all these things here. So you see here 14 called happen and it is tracking this thing, right? So you see all, all of this thing happen, execution, queue size and all, all particular thing. I don't know what is configured default. So that's why it will change the status accordingly. Or maybe the time wise also we change the status. Hope this is clear and uh, you are able to see the Hystric uh, dashboard as well as how the call happened in the Hystrix. And that's pretty much nothing. If you know this concept, then you are comfortable with any kind of implementation in Circuit Breaker. It's pretty straightforward uh, concept and uh, uh, like, you know, design pattern. Please say uh, if it is clear to you or if any query. Okay, Rohit is saying clear, Chandu is clear. Good, good, fine. <clears throat> I'm hoping uh, so far it's clear. Now let's go back again to our, uh, this thing. So what we have learned so far, uh, what is circuit breaker? How the circuit breaker you can design and what are the steps to design the circuit breaker? What are the implementation of the circuit breaker? One of the implementation of uh, circuit breaker, Netflix history we just went through and some theory about that 
which is not much and then we saw the full implementation of the circuit breaker there are some example i already told amazon top 10 movies even in netflix what happened let's say the netflix is down still they will show you top 10 default movies instead of showing the failure page or the blank page they will always show tab, top 10 movies so you will not never uh, you will never notice as a consumer that netflix is down or amazon is down so that's where they use uh, this is tricks and uh, circuit breakers okay and yeah now uh, we can go the another uh, framework called resilience 4j uh, though uh, people not wanted to use this because the the most preferred was hystrix it was going well but then uh, netflix because of their plan they only suggested that you use the re resilience 4j time being and uh, that's where it became a more alternate uh, to the uh, history because that is not available right now in the new uh, spring cloud framework okay so this is a uh, designed uh, exactly same uh, to the uh, like you know uh, what do you say in the history uh, with the java 8 and functional programming and uh, there is like framework called waiver uh, using functional language extension so it is built based on those libraries and it is also provide you the higher order function which means uh, it provide you a lot of decorator around that and you can write your own decorator or you can use the whatever required part in that particular uh, like you know interface or method or lambda so basically all the java 8 functional programming you can use while implementing resilience 4j so we will see that don't worry i mean just theoretically so essentially what happened in the resilience 4j they are not just a uh, like you know circuit breaker but they have much more than that so what they do the resilience 4j have many different type of library one is about circuit breaker the another is about rate limiter the another is bulk heading automated retrying result caching and timeout handling all these libraries are also available with the resilience 4j for today's uh, like you know a demo all these are not part of this uh, uh, thing but it's nice if you can learn them and you can read about that they are nice because all these can be used in the microservice if there are too many uh, requests are coming into the microservice how you can use the bulk head uh, pattern if uh, the, you want to limit uh, if 10 requests come you want to limit something so all these things can be uh, done using uh, resilience 4j but we will not be using right now right now we will be only focusing on this uh, this particular uh, project called the circuit breaker in the resilience 4j hope this is clear and uh, please let me know if uh, if any one of you uh, already heard about resilience 4j or like you know worked uh, please say yes or no 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 okay so mostly no so no worries it's very straightforward and uh, we will see okay but what i will say when you will go in the resilience for the library uh, you will find uh, those many things also so whenever you will try to read they these new things will confuse you and that's why i'm telling you don't worry about those rate limiting bulk heading automatic retrying result caching timeout handling these are separate functionality provided by resilience 4j which is part of their library itself like history was only designed for circuit breaker but resilience 4j is designed for circuit breaker plus n number of things so these n number of things whatever i selected you don't need to worry but if you want to read please go ahead your main focus for edge circuit breaker this is the library you need to be uh, checking out okay now or or we will some other day we can talk about other libraries how to use uh, one one example of each and we can check that but as of now for today's uh, thing because we are talking about circuit breaker we will go only about this particular thing okay so this is again same uh, kind of concept same uh, thing uh, like you know we we uh, already discussed that particular diagram but what happened uh, the circuit breaker in the resilience for they uses uh, a sliding window concept where what happened there are two type of circuit breaker you can apply using uh, this resilience 4j one is the count based and one is the time based 
So count base means like you know whenever the n request, let's say after ten request, if if ten consecutive request fail for five second, then I will uh, open my circuit. So that kind of configuration also you can do. Or another could be if uh, ten second uh, those many percentage of request failed for this particular time uh, interval then i will allow the circuit breaker to open so you can configure that kind of uh, configuration using resilience 4j but it was not available by default in history so that is the one thing you can see and there are so many configuration you can do with the uh, resilience 4j okay we will directly uh, go with the some of the configuration and how to use them but the the theory wise there is nothing much to read because it's same thing whatever we already discussed so we'll go in the application and application also I saw one error while running. So we need to see. <clears throat> so I'll uh, go with this resilience uh, 4J, uh, the quick library, the same library, order application and uh, payment application. Payment is by default same. And okay, one second. This payment controller is same, whatever we saw in the that controller, just to showcase the demo, we will start this application. But before it, uh, let's say, check this uh, order application. In the order application, uh, same we are using instead of this at the rate history command there, we are using at the rate circuit breaker. That's the only difference, okay? The other thing, default payment gateway, all is same. And then you have different properties for uh, circuit breaker while using resilience for this, that what kind of property you want. So let's say, uh, just a minute you want to use uh, uh, let's say count based property slide window size phi so phi is the count whenever the phi request for this uh, window goes then threshold uh, 40 second and uh, this is slow call rate permitted number of calls in half open state so if you your uh, circuit breaker is in half open state how many calls you will allow so you will allow only one call the maximum waiting duration could be 10 seconds or uh, all these things you can configure at each level. Okay, so basically these uh, configuration you need to check, but nothing much while using resilience 4J and then it will behave the exactly same whatever we see in the history command. So I hope this was clear. Anything else you want to understand or something because I thought like uh, once you know the circuit breaker concept, it's, it's exactly same. Please let me know if anything is not clear. And more importantly, while using the resiliency 4J, the history people use with the annotation and uh, configuration, but resilience 4J, instead of people doing like this, they generally implement with the configuration and programmatically. So what I will do, I will create a program also the, I mean, the, the one way is like, you know, use this way. The other could be, I will use this uh, with configuration like this and we'll try to run so that's two two part of uh, resilience 4j how we can use this uh, resilience 4j so i will try to implement both way and we'll share the code so don't worry on that but uh, that's pretty much about uh, resilience 4j because we, we want to talk only about circuit breaker not the bulkhead and all because then it will be too much scope okay now please uh, let me know uh, if it makes sense to you and uh, you are clear Uh, please write in the comments so that I can go further. Still waiting uh, whether it's clear or not. Nikhil, Prakash, Chandu, Santosh, Ira, Rohit, Priya. Okay, so I see uh, mostly it's clear. And I know, I mean, uh, few things might be new, uh, but no worries. When you will do the assignment, uh, I will share this uh, GitHub link also. And uh, then, uh, and I'd ask more questions. Can you please share the GitHub link? Yeah, I'll, I'll share the right away. So that uh, 
depend. I will uh, still need to load this particular code, but as of now, you can check this here. I don't have much code right now uh, in the GitHub, but whatever we are discussing now, we will be start uh, uploading there. So this is my GitHub and from last many years, I'm not continuously doing that, but I thought now because uh, you guys will require, so let's do it. Okay, so I, whatever we discussed today, all the project, I will upload that uh, very soon. Okay, today only. And uh, YouTube uh, is the same, uh, you can say, Techies Walk, uh, uh, YouTube, right? I don't know the link. This one probably, it's just like, you know, I don't have much content right now. I'm just starting, so you can, uh, this one, yes. Something like this. Once, yeah, you can try with this. Once you will join that uh, Facebook private group, you will uh, get this. But yeah, uh, I will uh, try to bring some much content here. No worries. Uh, because first I want to add uh, this microservice end to end. So what I want you to do now, uh, the important thing, uh, we need to finish this assignment. So last uh, week, uh, you build the assignment about Joomla API Gateway and Eureka service integration, right? What is the monitor tool we use in microservice to monitor the application? So there are many monitor tools. One is Prometheus. I'm writing here. One is App Dynamics. They are uh, very popular. But there are so many other. One, one very famous is this. Uh, uh, telemetry that is also very famous and uh, elk is just for logging yeah but uh, prometheus and app dynamics is the majority one to monitor the application okay fine so this uh, particular assignment you can see what i'm asking the same thing which i have shown you and you will get the assign i mean that the github link also but try to run your own with history with the resilience 4j so that you will be clearing out if there is any uh, compile error or if anything else you need to build or something else. And once you finish these three assignments, uh, please keep submitting them so that I can keep a track and then I can add more value. Also, what I'm thinking, uh, how to make you grow into uh, just because I want to know more about you guys so that I can help you like, you know, my, my another plan going uh, where I will be exclusively meeting with the people where I can uh, make or help them to grow in the career and increase their salary by 200% or maybe minimum 100%. So that kind of thing, I'm just uh, looking, if someone is interested, we can have one-on-one -on -one call and I can give some suggestion how to plan your things and uh, around these technologies. Okay, but yeah, uh, what you can do, just try to do the assignment in this uh, one hour session, probably uh, I can't cover much uh, for today's uh, webinar, but that's pretty much, I will share all these assignment, uh, even in Telegram, even in the Facebook group, and uh, please continue on that. And I have already given you the this uh, drive link also, so that you can keep checking that there are so many things I will be updating, but uh, at least assignments are there. But other things uh, also I will be keep updating uh, whenever I get some time. Okay, so yeah, any any other question? Uh, we can then wrap it up uh, for today. And I hope, uh, like you know, please uh, give me some input, some feedback, so that I can uh, improve how I can add more value, how you guys understand more, because what happened, you guys are not interacting in the sense like, you know, live. So it's sometimes very hard, like, you know, whether you're getting or not. Yeah, Google Drive link, I already shared in the, uh, in the Facebook uh, link. Can we make WhatsApp group? Uh, Rohit, uh, WhatsApp have the limitation of 250. So that's why I prefer Telegram. We already have a Telegram group. Because when the group, uh, we already like, you know, 104 people uh, out of them, uh, almost 28, 29 already joined the telegram and uh